Well, joining me now from Tel Aviv is Ron Prosser, the former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. So many thanks indeed for joining us uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Prosser. Uh, 70 delegates uh, from 70... Uh, uh, delegates from 70 countries are attending uh, this conference in Paris. But the two major players, the two key players, representatives from neither party, from the Israelis or Palestin Palestinians, are attending this uh, meeting. Is it really going to make any effects to any difference? Is it really going to push the whole idea of having a two-state solution any further on? Well, it's a good question. Uh, first of all, I was also the former Israeli ambassador to the court of St. James, which makes me very happy to be back on Sky News. But uh, the international conference is, uh, I think, uh, in the wrong place with the wrong message and the wrong timing. What does it mean, wrong place? Instead of Paris, it should be in Cairo with the regional players. The wrong timing, you know, with the lame duck uh, uh, Holland in France, five days before an American administration. Well, what can I tell you? Uh, the only thing that can come out of this is a lot of quacking, but no resolution cracking. And, uh, and from, uh, when you look at the messaging, what's the messaging? We have to get the Palestinians back to the negotiation table, which they deserted two years ago. So international conference basically telling them, hey, guys, there's no reason for you, no incentive to go back to direct negotiations, which is tough. You really have to sweat. It's frustrating. But that's the only way to achieve peace, as we saw with the peace with Egypt and with Jordan. And Mr. Prosser, I mean, what message does it send to, to both parties, the Israeli and the Palestinians, to say that, look, you, you can't come to the actual talks itself. You can come to the conclusions and, and listen to our findings. Look, uh, this international conference uh, in Paris, what do you really have? And Paris is the culinary, you know, uh, number one place in the world. You have a French chef with 70 sous chefs. I mean, uh, too many cooks spoil the broth, but I think uh, Ramsey would call this uh, Hell's Kitchen. Nothing good can come out of this international conference. Uh, five days before this administration, uh, the new administration in the United States, international conference can be a, you know, a supporting act for direct negotiations between the sides. We now need regional players where we have coinciding interests between the Saudis, the Egyptians, the, the, uh, the Gulfies and Israel because of uh, international terrorism and extreme Islam. And we can try in a regional conference to have the relevant leverages to try and achieve peace between the two sides. There's no circumventing direct negotiations. That's the only way to achieve real and lasting peace. I mean, the French Foreign Minister, uh, Jean-Marc Arrault, he has told our delegates there is no time to waste. We are not sheltered from uh, an explosion on violence. I mean, he would say, and the other uh, delegates who are there, that they need to act now. It's better to do something uh, right now than wait than to, to act later on. Uh, only last year, the United Nations Security Council uh, voted in favour uh, of condemning uh, illegal settlements uh, in the West Bank. So they would believe that it's better to do something now and to talk about it to push a uh, settlement forward uh, in the coming years ahead than to do nothing about it and simply wait? Well, look, uh, the last Security Council resolution, which was one-sided uh, completely, what does it basically say? It says that the Wailing Wall, Jerusalem, and the Hebrew University, which I'm a graduate of, are all so-called settlements to occupy territories. Well, what can I tell you? You have a problem with me and you have a problem with history. Jerusalem was the capital of the Jewish people when London was still a swamp. So in the sense, today, the Security Council resolution trying to organize an international conference uh, in Paris where Syria people are being slaughtered, Yemen, Libya, all around, we have uh, suicide bombers in the midst of Europe. I mean, even for cynics, this seems to me like uh, uh, going a bit too far. Yes, it's important. Yes, we should try and reach a solution. 
And like I said, it's the wrong place and the wrong timing and the wrong message. The message should be to the Palestinians, guys, return to direct negotiations. That's the only way, only way we can achieve lasting peace in the region, which we all need. Hey, Mr. Proza, I'd like to get your, your thoughts as the former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations. President-elect uh, Donald Trump has been uh, making noises uh, during uh, his campaign, during his election campaign, uh, calling for the, the United States uh, embassy to be removed from, uh, from Tel Aviv, a place where it's been for 68 years, moving it to a Jerusalem. Do you think that's uh, the right thing to do, or do you think that would cause further havoc, further disruption, and potentially further violence in, in the area? Well, there are two elements here. One, uh, the fact that uh, everyone threatens uh, with violence, you know, and threatening all over. Just think if we would have to act on threatening of uh, the Arab world day in and day out. The second part is Jerusalem is the capital of the Jewish people. So in the sense, I think this is the right thing to do. And at the end of the day, it's going to send the right message of Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people, with Jerusalem as the eternal capital of the Jewish state. Okay, uh, Ron Prozor, the former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, and many thanks indeed for joining us at this lunchtime.